Good morning. I'm James, and I'm so happy and privileged to be a pastor here at Bethel. It's an honor to serve alongside all of you and to think about and to realize just how much Jesus has done and Jesus continues to do in our midst. Here we find ourselves in Advent, in the second week, preparing for the celebration to come. And with much anticipation, we look forward to celebrating Christmas. We look forward to that time when the nation seems to be unified and, and proclaiming the birth of a Savior and hearts are yearning for him to come. And yet, even in the midst of our preparation, there can be fear and anxiety. Fear, anxiety, busyness, hurry, all of those things that would distract us. Fear and anxiety because this year is not going to be the same as years past. This year is going to look different. And there's a lot of things in society that do look different. There's attitudes and, and opinions and people seem to be on edge and everything seems to be compounding and seems to be getting busier and busier. And in the midst of the busyness, we hear a message, a message to look for peace, a message to hope for peace, a message to open our eyes so hopefully we could see peace. One of my favorite Christmas memories happened a couple years ago, actually several years ago, it was my first year as a pastor. I was serving in Valley View and High Prairie and shortly after I got there also Peace River and it was the first year that I was traveling to all three locations uh, to officiate at Christmas Eve services. And it was busy, it, it was a whirlwind. I woke up in the morning and, and had a service in High Prairie, and it was an amazing service with God's people, and I was so blessed to be part of it. But from High Prairie, I had to jump in my truck and drive to Peace River and have a service in Peace River, and then from Peace River all the way back down to Valley View for the last service of the night, and we did the last service in Valley View, and it was amazing. And I remember sitting there singing Silent Night, and there was this feeling of contentment, this feeling of amazing peace. And after the service was over and everyone had gone home, I sat in the sanctuary for a little bit and, and just reflected on how thankful I was. Thankful I was to be able to be in the position that I was in. Thankful for Jesus for doing all of the things that he does. And then I got in my truck and I started to drive home. And on my way home, I had an experience that is beyond compare. When I was driving home down the highway off in the ditch to the right, I could see a reflection of light. It was eyes. There was an animal in the ditch. And as I got closer, I realized that the animal in the ditch was a wolf. And so I stopped my truck, I turned off the headlights, and then the wolf passed in front of me. And shortly after, there was another one, and another one, and another one, and soon there was a whole pack of wolves emerging from the ditch, crossing the highway to go off into the field on the other side. And the last wolf that went across the road, he turned his head and it was massive. And he just gazed at the truck, seemingly unconcerned. He looked for a couple seconds and then walked away. And it was such an amazing night as that full moon glistened down on the snow and these amazing creatures went in front of me. For me, that just pointed to the magnificence of God. It pointed to the special night that I was experiencing. It took me out of my worry, out of my busyness, out of my own head, and showed me the magnificence of God, the real reason 
that we celebrate, it showed me the magnificence of the one who would come, who can pull us out of the things that we're experiencing, who can pour into us his peace and his love and his hope and his joy, a peace that comes beyond all understanding. I'm amazed that as we read the Christmas story, that as Jesus has broken in to the world, he seemingly goes unnoticed for a little bit. Luke describes the people around, and, and as Jesus is born, there's shepherds on the hillside tending to their flocks. They're seemingly unaware of what's coming, and as those shepherds are tending their flocks, an angel of the Lord comes and says, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And then suddenly there was a company of the heavenly host that appeared with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men, to people on whom his favor rests. God is able to break through everything. God's peace, it's not an external factor of stopping things, but God's peace comes internally. God's peace allows us to live and to love and to forgive. God's peace flows in us and through us and out of us so that we might see and share and live and love with Christ who has chosen you above everything. God's peace for me is knowing this, knowing that you and I have one who has chosen us above all. We have one who is with us regardless of the circumstances and situations that we face, even when those things seem out of control, in the midst of family conflict, in the midst of external circumstances that would steal our song, in the midst of a global pandemic even, We have a God who breaks in, a God who longs to be part of our life, and a God who offers his peace, his love, his hope, and his joy. Jesus loves you more than you can possibly imagine. May you always experience his peace. May we always experience his peace. Please pray with me. Lord, we thank you so much that you are a God who has invested everything in us. You are not far away from us, Lord, but you are here and you are now. I thank you so much for that. Lord, you know our hearts and you know our minds and you know our circumstances. We ask that you would be with all who are facing anxiety, that you would calm the storms that they face. Lord, that you would be with those who are feeling depressed and alone, that you would come and you would reveal yourself to them, that you would show them that they're never alone, that they are loved beyond measure. We ask that you would intervene in our preparations and in the busyness of life and that we would see that you are here, that you're celebrating with us, that you are showing us the way. Lord, continue to help us to focus on you Lord, we ask for safety and and ask that you would deliver us safely through this pandemic. And we pray, Lord, we pray for the times of conflict in our world, the times of conflict in our lives, the times of conflict even in our family, Lord, that you would be in and through and above all conflict, that it would cease, Lord, that your peace would rain down on us and that we would be peacemakers and peace givers. Lord, we pray for those that we love and we pray for those who think that they're our enemies. We pray for complete reconciliation and and peace. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.